subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. I'm back again with yet another interesting lesson on the Joy Learning channel, the SHSR. My name is Madam Judith, and I'm still going to take you through course accounting. All too soon, we have come to the end of the material pricing. So far, we have looked at the various methods of stock valuation, and we have done the first in, first out method, the last in, first out method. And last week, we tackled the weighted average method, and then the simple average method i hope you can all recall these four methods and how we can value the closing stock as well as the issue price so today in our lesson we are going to look at the last two methods for our level and that is our topic for today so let's just get rolling by the end of the lesson you should be able to define the stock valuation, which I know you already know because you've done it in our previous lesson. Define standard method of material pricing and its advantages. You should also be able to define the replacement method of material pricing and prepare a store's ledger using standard method and the replacement method of material pricing. And lastly, we should be able to prepare a profit and loss account using the various methods of stock valuation we have done in our previous lesson. So let's get rolling. Stock valuation, of which we already know what stock valuation is. We are always looking at how we can value the closing stock. We have done this in our previous lesson, that is with FIFO, LIFO weighted average and we know all these forms parts as the types of stock valuation so what then i know by now you can all define stock valuation we said stock valuation is the process of calculating the value of closing stock at the end of a particular period that's the closing stock as it becomes the opening stock of the succeeding month this we all know so we have been able to ascertain the closing stock using the four methods now we are going to determine our closing stock using the last two methods left per our level now what is material pricing material pricing also is the process of deciding on the cost to place on materials that are supposed to be issued to production so you have a shop, you have a store, and you have materials in your store. How much are you going to price the material before you issue them out to production? That is what material pricing seeks to achieve. So how do we determine the issue price of a material before we issue them out to production? We have done the first four. So today we are going to look at how we can determine our issue price using the replacement method and then the standard method. We have the standard method of material pricing. What is the standard method? When you hear standard, what comes to mind? In your homes, sometimes before we leave to the market, we have predetermined a price that we are going to buy an item. Am I wrong? No. Most of you, before you leave the house to Cantamantu, you have determined that you are going to purchase a sneaker that you have spotted at a particular price. That is your predetermined price. That is what you want to, how much you want to purchase that sneaker. But when you get to the market, it has its own price. So we standard, before we can issue out a material to production, we have to use the predetermined price. So I'm a production firm. I have materials in my warehouse. How much am I supposed to issue it out to production? Standard price method is telling us that we have to use a predetermined price to issue our materials out to production. This method is very simple as compared to the FIFO and NIFO. We have already been given the predetermined price or the company have set a price for itself. 
not using the market price. So standard method is a method used where materials received are recorded at the cost price. That is the materials we purchase into the stores are issued, are bought at what? The cost price. But the issue price is at what? A predetermined price. Something the organization has what? Predetermined to issue the materials at. So with standard, we wouldn't have to worry about which materials came into the stores first or which materials came into the stores last. We are going to go by the predetermined price of which the organization have set to issue their materials out to production. Let's look at some of the advantages of standard price method of material pricing. So standard method of material pricing and its advantages. It says it's very simple to appraise and easy to understand. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't need to know which materials came into our warehouse first or which is in the warehouse last with the FIFO and LIFO, we need to know which materials came into our stores first so that we will have to issue the, those materials out first at the rate it came with. But with the standard, it is very simple. We just have to issue the materials out at the predetermined price. It is not affect, affected by fluctuations in prices. So whether the market price is high or low, the issue price is not affected because it's going to use what the predetermined price. So with the standard method, it is not affected by price changes on the market and clerical work is reduced considerably. Its characteristics. What are some of the characteristics of the standard method? I'm sure by now you'll be able to write down some few characteristics of the standard method in your notebooks for reference. But let's look at some few on our screens. Some characteristics of the standard method. It is administratively simple. Very, very simple. Since stocks are not issued at their actual prices, profits or losses may arise. Probably the market price is higher than the predetermined price. And this will lead to a loss because we are issuing our materials lower at the actual price. And if the actual price is low, it means our predetermined price that we have set is higher than the actual price. Then it means the organization is going to make profit. So when the actual price is lower than the predetermined price, price it means there is going to be a profit but if the actual price is higher than the predetermined price then it means there is going to be losses made by the organization if a realistic standard price can be established then some guidance to purchase efficiency may be obtained if the standard price is high then it means there's what purchasing efficiency which is going to be obtained at the end of the period so these are some characteristics of the standard price method of material pricing. Let's take an illustration there. We see how best we can prepare the stock sheet and then show our closing value and then the issuing price for the subsequent sales that were made. So illustration one to illustrate the standard price method. The information below relates to Joy Limited. Dealers in electric ions for the month of September. The information below relates to Joy Limited. Dealers in electric ions for the month of September. So we have our informations on our screen. I'll be glad if you can copy them quickly so that we can all walk through first to prepare the stock sheet for Joy Limited. On 1st September, there was an opening stock of 10 units at one cities. There was an opening stock of 10 units at one cities. On 4th September, there was a purchase of 15 units at three Ghana cities. And then on 10th September, there was also an issue of 15 units at six cities. On 12th September, there was a purchase of 10 units at five Ghana cities. And then on the 15th of September, there was an issue of 18 units at seven cities. So we will all prepare our stock sheet together with the idea from FIFO, LIFO weighted and simple average method. We are all going to prepare the standard stock sheet together. So we have our 
final part of the question. Here, the standard price of each unit was four Ghana cities. So you can see that the organization have set a predetermined price of four cities. And we are supposed to prepare the stock sheet using standard price method. Let's begin. So we have our table here. As I said, with the idea from FIFO and LIFO, we know how to prepare a stock sheet. We have the date column, the purchases, the issues, and then the balance column. Now, on 1st September, per our question, there was an opening balance of 10 cities, as indicated on the screen. We have 10 cities at a rate of 4. We multiply the 10 by the 4, giving us 40 Ghana CD. So this is the first transaction from our question. We go on to the question again. Then we have 4 September, there was a purchase of 15 units at three Ghana cities. So we go back to our worksheet and indicate that too. So we have 4 September, 15 cities at the purchase column, and then we have three cities as the rate, and the amount is 45 Ghana cities. So we move everything that we have recorded at the purchase column to the balance column to show the balance of units we are having in our stalls at the end of the day. So we add the opening balance of 10 to the 15 that we purchased on the 4th giving us the 25 at the end of fourth and the standard price is four so don't forget the quantity of units we are having in our stores now is still going to be priced at the standard price so we have 25 at a rate of four though it was purchased at three it means when we are about to issue we are, can only issue the unit at a rate of four gamma cities so we add the we multiply the 25 by the four giving us 100 cities so by end of 4th september we have 25 units in our stalls and the value is 100 cities so we go back to our question and then we look at the next transaction that was made we have on the 10th of september there was an issue of 15 ghana cities sorry 15 units at a rate of six cities. So here we've been given a rate for the issue, but with the standard method, we made mention that they use what a predetermined price. So we ignore the six cities, which is the market price. We cannot issue the unit at the six cities, but we are going to issue the 15 units out at a predetermined rate, which have been given to us in the question. The organization has set its rate at what four cities. So for each issue we make, we are going to go by what? The predetermined rate instead of the market price of six Ghana cities. So we go back to our worksheet and we indicate our issue. So on the 10th of September, there was an issue of 15 units, 15 as indicated on our screen. And we are using what? The predetermined rate of four cities. Instead of the market rate of six, we are going by the predetermined rate of four. That is with the standard method. So 15 multiplied by four cities will give us the value of 60. So once we have issued out materials from our warehouse, it means the quantity we have in our stores will have to reduce. By the end of 4th September, we have 25, and now we have issued out 15 units. So we are left with a balance of 10, and still at a rate of what? 4, that is the standard price. Whatever units we have in our stores are still being measured at, uh, with a standard price met, uh, rate. That is the predetermined rate that the organization has set. So now we have 10 units left in our stores, and it will be valued at 4. So we multiply the 10 units left uh, by the 4, and then we have 40 cities by the end of 10th September. 
So we move on to the next transaction. That was on the 12th of September. There was a purchase of what 10 units. We have added up to the materials we are having in our stocks. It's like we being home when we are running short of foodstuffs at home. We always have to do what replenish as we cook. We have to add up so that we don't run out of what materials at home. That's the same thing we are doing here. When you are producing a product, you have materials in your warehouse. As you issue out to production, you need to do what? Replenish. You need to add up to the materials you are having in your stores. So after issuing out some of the materials to production, we have to add up so that we don't run out of what? Stock. So on the 12th, there was a purchase of 10 units at a rate of 5 CDs, 50 pesos. We go back to our worksheet and indicate that in our stock sheet. So we have on the 12th of September, there was a purchase of 10 units at a rate of 5 CD 50 pesos. So we multiply the 10 by the 5 CD 50 pesos, giving us 55 CDs. So once we have bought materials, it means the materials we have in our stores will go up. So we are adding the 10, so the balance of 10 we had by the end of 10th September, giving us 20 units. And don't forget, we are still going by the predetermined rate. So we multiply the 20 units by the four CDs. As indicated on your screen, we have 20 by 4, giving us 60 CDs at the end of 12th September. So we move on to the next transaction, and there was what an issue of... 18 units on the 15th at a rate of 7. We still have to ignore the market price. So the market price by 15 September was 7 CD. But we cannot issue the materials out to production at the rate of 7. So we have to go by what? The predetermined price. So to our worksheet, we have 15 September. There was an issue of 18 and the predetermined rate is four Ghana cities. Instead of the seven CD as the market price, with the standard method, we are going with the predetermined price. So every issue we make under the standard price method, we are going to use what the standard rate that has been set. So we have 18 multiplied by four, giving us 72 cities. So we subtract the 18 from the 20, the 20 here, by the end of the 12, we have 20 units in our stores. Now we have issued out 18 to production. So we are left with what, two. So this two is our closing stock in units. And in value, we have eight cities under the standard price method. So we made mention that stock valuation is what value closing stock. So what is the value of our closing stock at the end of the day? So the value of our closing stock using the standard price method is eight CDs and in units, we have two units in our stores. Let's look at the replacement method. Then we can prepare the profit and loss account. So I believe that you have followed through and you'll be able to repair a stock sheet using the standard price method. Good. So now let's look at the replacement method and how to repair the stock sheet using that method of material pricing. So we have replacement method of pricing. Replace. When you hear the word replace, what comes to mind? You are replacing something with another, right? Yeah. So if you are replacing, then what are we replacing when we are using the price in this definition? If we hear replace, we said replace means we are replacing something with another. Now fix in the price. It means you are replacing the price with a price that the organization have set. So in short, replacement method is replacing the issuing price with a price set by the organization. So then let's look at the definition of the replacement method of pricing. 
Replacement price method is also known as the market price method. It's also known as the market price method. It's a method of pricing materials where material price is at the price at which that would replace. It's at the price at which that would replace. So if the market price is two and we are supposed to issue materials out to stores today, we are going to replace it with the market price today. We go to the market today, the price of coconut is one CD and we have to issue coconut from our stores. It means we are going to replace it with what the one CD on the market today. That is the definition with replacement. We are replacing the price with the market price today. That's the market price on the date of issuing the material. So that is the replacement method. We are replacing the issuing price with the market price on the date of issuing that particular material. It reflects the current prices in the cost of production. So if you are using the market price on the date of issuing, then definitely it's going to do what? Reflect the current prices on the market during the cost of production. What are some of the advantages of um, replacement method? Let's look at the characteristics first. So we have the characteristics of um, replacement method of pricing. It is not acceptable to tax authorities not an actual cost price therefore st stock profits and losses may occur we are not going by the actual cost prices so therefore there may be profits and losses it makes cost comparison between jobs difficult because the job you did yesterday may have a different market price and the job you are doing today may also have a different market price making job comparison very difficult what are some of the advantages? It is simple to operate since no calculation is required. Unlike the first in and last in method, we have to look at which materials came in first and last and there are some calculations that need to be made. As compared to the replacement method, we are only going to replace the issue price with the market price on the date of issuing out the materials to production. Another advantage is material cost is charged at the current market prices. Material cost is charged at the current market prices. So these are some of advantages of using replacement method to price your materials to production. Now we take the first illustration we use the same illustration to demonstrate how we can prepare the stock sheet using the replacement method of pricing. So illustration two, by the same information as we use in illustration one to illustrate the standard price method of material pricing. So we are going by the same information to prepare the stock sheet for the replacement method. The information below relates to Joy Limited. I believe you already have the information. So we go through quickly. We can prepare our stock sheet. Dealers in electric ions for the month of September. On the first of September, an opening stock of 10 units at one cities. On the fourth of September, the purchase of 15 units at three cities. 10th of September, there was also an issue of 15 at 6 cities. And then on the 12th of September, there was a purchase of 10 units at 5 cities. And lastly, there was an issue of 18 units for 70 on 15th of September. Since we already have an idea how to prepare the stock sheet, we will start quickly and see how we can arrive at the stock and then how we can issue out materials to production using the replacement method of pricing. So here we've given the replacement prices for all the days we have issue. We have replacement prices for units sold where as follows. 
So on the 10th of September, the issue is two CDs, 50 pesos. And then on the 15th of September, the issue rate is three CDs. So there was an issue on the 10th and then on the 15th of which we are going to use to repair the stock sheet. So we are not going to go by the issue price, but at the replacement prices for each unit sold. So our requirement is to prepare a stock sheet using the replacement price method. So we already know the format, the date column, the purchases, the issues, and then the balance. On the 1st of September, there was an opening balance of 10 units at a rate of one, giving us 10 CDs. You know how to do it. We just multiply the 10 by the rate of one to get the value at the end of the day. So by 1st September, we already have 10 units in our stocks at a rate of one, giving us the 10 CDs. Now, when we look on our screen, the next transaction was on the 4th of September. There was a purchase of 15 units, and the rate is 3 CDs. 15 units at a rate of 3 CDs. I'm sure you are doing the same at home. Open your account, and then let's all do the transactions together. You know where to enter the purchases. You go to the purchases column, and then you enter the unit that have been purchased. So our worksheet, we have 15 at a rate of three. We have the rate here for the purchase. We have 15 units and we multiply the 15 by the three. That will give us 45 units. I made mention that anytime we purchase, it means our stock in our stores have increased. So we are adding the 15 units we just purchased to the opening balance of 10 giving us 25 and our new value at the end of the 4th of September is 55 cities. So you can see the difference here with the replacement method. We are going by the rate that has been given in our question with the standard method you realize that the balance side, we had four CD throughout, which was the standard rate that has been given. But with the replacement, we are only adding the units and then the amount to know the total amount in our stores. Then we move to the next transaction. That is on the 10th of September, there was an issue of 15 units at a rate of six. Don't forget that we mentioned that with the replacement method, we are going by the replacement prices that have been given for all the units sold. On the 10th of September, we were given a replacement price of 2 CD, 50 pesos. So here, we are going to issue the materials to production at the rate of 2 CD, 50 pesos, which is the replacement price that have been given for the issue of materials on the 10th of September. So if we go to our worksheet, we have 15 units at the rate of 2.5 as indicated on your screens. We multiply the 15 by the 2 CD 50 pesos and that gives us 37.50. So we subtract it from the balance we have in our stores. That is 15 from 25, leaving us with a balance of 10, and then 37.5 from the 55, giving us a balance of 17 CDs, 50 pesos. Now, the next transaction was on the 12th of September. There was a purchase of 10 units at 5 CD, 50 pesos. On the 12th, there was a purchase of 10 units at 5 CD, 50 pesos and we go to our worksheet to indicate that so on the 12th of september we have 10 units at 5 cd 50 pesos which gives us 55 cities 10 units 
at five CD fifty pesos, which gave us fifty five units. So we add that to the materials in our stalls. The ten plus ten giving us twenty units. We have this ten we just purchased plus this very ten which is already in our stalls, giving us twenty units in our stalls. And then we add the fifty five CDs here to our seventeen point five giving us 72 CDs, 50 pesos at the end of 12 September. Now we look at the last transaction. So we have 15 September, there was an issue of 18 units at 7 CD. And the replacement price for 15 September is 3 CDs. So instead of this, seven cities we are going to issue our materials out to production at a rate of what three Ghana cities I'm sure you can do that quickly in your worksheet this you don't have to do any calculation you just have to enter the 18 units at a rate of three so as you can see on your screens on the 15th of September we issued out 18 units and the rates that was given us in our question is three CDs. So we multiply the 18 by three to arrive at 54 as our value. And to determine the closing value using the replacement method, we subtract the 18 from our 20, which is already in our stores. Means at the end of 15 September, we have only two units left in our warehouse and the closing value for the two units is at 18 CDs, 50 pesos. So this is how we can determine our closing value using the replacement method of material pricing. I hope and believe that when you meet any question and you are asked to use any of the six various methods of material pricing or stock valuation, you'll be able to calculate them with ease. Now, before we can end material pricing, we will have to prepare our profit statement. In some of your questions, most times you are asked to prepare either the gross profit or the cost of sales or the trading profit itself at the end of determining your closing stock. So once we know our closing value, then we can go on and prepare our profit statement. So stock valuation and the calculation of profit. Stock valuation and the calculation of profit. You may be asked to calculate the gross profit or net profit after ascertaining your closing stock, as I just mentioned. How do we go about that? So now that we have been able to determine our closing value, we will use it in preparing our profit statement. So going by the same question, we will prepare the either the FIFO method or the LIFO method, then we use that to repair our profit because as we made mention, the standard and the replacement method are not acceptable by the tax authorities. So most of the times, we don't use those two methods to repair our profit statement. You can either use the first in, first out method, the last in, first out method, the weighted average method, or the simple average method. So we use the same question, repair the cost sheets, determine the closing value, then we can use that to prepare our profit statement. So this is the format for preparing the trading profit and loss account using either the FIFO or the LIFO. It can be the same for weighted and then simple average, but for now we are looking at just the FIFO and the LIFO. You can see on your screen the sales. We have the sales. We have the cost of sales and as accounting students, you know how to determine cost of sale. That is your opening stock, you add your purchases, then you less your closing stock. If you don't have all these information, there is an, an alternative way of getting your cost of sale. That is in your cost sheet, you just add the, all the amounts you have sold your uh, materials out to determine your cost of sale. That is if you have not been given 
an opening stock and then you don't know the closing stock you can as well use that method to determine your cost of sales then we subtract our cost of sales from our sales to determine the gross profit if there is any expenses we less it to get our net profit so that is our format for preparing our trading profit and loss account now the same question we have the same question on our screen so now we are used to the question but we are going to prepare the stock sheet using the FIFO method we determine our closing stock, then we use it to prepare our profit statement. So the question is on your screens for some few minutes so that you get every information. Since we have already done the FIFO method in our first ever lesson, I believe that you have worked more examples and now you can prepare the stock sheet using the FIFO method with ease. So I've already done that. If you have been, been practicing, then your solution will look just like mine. So I'll give you a few minutes so that you work it out or you follow through as I explain the solution on your screens. Then we pick our closing value to prepare our profit statement. So we have the FIFO method since we have the question. The opening balance is still entered at the balance side. Once you have a question with opening balance, don't bother entering it under the purchases. If not, you increase the purchase amount. So you enter it directly at the balance column. So that's our opening balance. We have 10 units at a rate of one CD, giving us what? 10 CDs. And then on the fourth, there was a purchase of 15. 15 here. And the rate was three, and we can see the value there as 45 CDs. We add it up at the balance. We have 25 units and 50. I know some of you want to bring it down. You could bring the 10 down and add the 15 or on 4th September so that you can ascertain the total of 25. If you are conversant to, you can just go straight and enter the 25 there and add the balances together to arrive at the 55 as shown on your screens and then on the 10th of september there was an issue of 15 units as the fifo method says the first materials that came into the stores have to be issued out before the subsequent ones and we can see that in our stores we already have 10 units meaning we have to issue those materials out before we can issue any other materials that came into our store so the first 10 have to be issued at the rate it came with so we already had 10 in our stores and the rate was one cd so if you have to issue out we have to issue the first 10 units out at the rate of what one cd before we can touch the material that we purchase on the fourth so after issuing the 10 which is the balance out we are left with just five units to ascertain the 15 unit that was issued on the 10th so we pick five units from this 15 units here so these five units as you can see was taken from the 15 units we purchased on the fourth to get the 15 units in total that was issued on the 10th and the 15 unit that was purchased on the fourth was purchased at the rate of three cities so the five have to be issued at a rate of three cities we do that and then we multiply to get a total of 25 so now we are done issuing the 15 units out we take it from our balance of 25 from the 4th of september giving a balance of what 10 this 10 don't forget is from the 15 on our screen here this same 15 it's left with just 10 cities so we subtract our 25 from our balance of 55 also to have a balance of 30 and then on the 12th of september there was a purchase of 10 units at a rate of five cities 50 pesos we indicate that under our purchases column then we multiply to arrive at the amount of 55 cities is an addition so we add up to the stock in our stores which is the 10 plus this 10 
giving us 20 units by the end of 12 September. And then we add the 55 to the balance of 30 to arrive at 85 cities. Then the last transaction says there was an issue of 18 units. There was an issue of 18 unit and this 18 unit we cannot issue all at a go though we can see this 20 units in our balance we can't issue all the 20 at a go because some materials came into our stores first i know definitely in your troubles when your parents come for visitation and they bring you the food stamps you want to consume the old ones first before you can touch the new one that was brought to you during visitation it's just like fifo you have to issue the material that were already in the stores first before the subsequent ones. So we know we have a total of 20, but we have to issue the first 10 that is already in our stores first before we can issue the remaining eight to arrive at the total of 18 units that was issued on the 15th. So we remember that the 15 here on the 4th, we have issued five already so we are left with the balance of 10 so the 10 here is from the 15 that we purchased on the fourth we will have to issue that 10 out first before we can issue this 10 out so the 10 that we purchased on the fourth was at a rate of three so that is the issue price that is why you are seeing three here the issue price is three because the unit we purchased on the 15th was at a rate of three and once we are issuing those materials out, we have to issue it at the rate that it came with. So you multiply the 10 by the 3, giving us 30 Ghana cities. Now we are left with how many you need to arrive at the 18 unit that was issued on the 15. We are left with just 8 units. The 8 units now we can go ahead and issue all from this very 10 that we purchase last because we've already issued the first that was already in our stores so eight from this 10 will give us a balance of two so you could see that with the replacement and the standard method though we are having two as the closing stock but the closing value differs when we go back to the um, replacement method you realize that we have a closing balance of 18 cities 50 pesos but with the first in first out method though our closing um, unit is two but our closing value is what 11 cities so this is the 11 cities we are going to pick to prepare our cost and um, profit statement now we know the closing stock which is 11 keep this we are going to need it when we are preparing our trading profit and loss now from our format we saw that there are sales but per our question as we can see we have the issue 15 as 6 issue 18 as 7 to determine our sales we have to multiply this 15 by the 6 not the issue price in our stock sheet this will give us our total sales. This is the actual sales rate. We have 6 CD for the 15 units and then 7 CD for the 18 units. So 15 by 6 and then 18 by 7. We add it and get our total sales. So that is what I've done for you. Calculation of sales. We have term September. There is 15 at the rate of 6 and then 90 then on the 15th september we have 18 at the rate of 7 giving us 1 2 6 so this becomes our total sale that we'll be using for the preparation of the profit then we have calculation sorry of purchase purchases so on the 4th of September, we made the purchase of 15 units at the rate of 3, giving us the 45. And then 12 September, there was also a purchase of 10 at 5.5, giving us 55. So in total, we have our purchases at 100 CD. That's 45 plus 55, giving us 100. Then the closing store from the FIFO we just prepared. 
we mentioned 11 cities. So our sales is 216. Our purchases is 100. Our closing stock is 11. And then our opening stock, which has been given to us in the question, there was an opening balance of 10 units at one CD. And multiply that, we are going to get 10 CD for our opening balance. So we can go ahead and pay our profit and loss account. So this is the profit and loss statement. Our sales per our calculation is 216 by multiplying the actual sales rate by the number of units that was issued for both dates, we had 216. Then I made mention that the cost of sales, we have alternative way of determining our cost of sales. So I can go back to the FIFO calculation. You can see all the amount at the issue price as indicated here. This will give us the cost of sales. If we add all this, it should give the same amount we will get if we add our opening balance to the purchases and then subtract our closing balance from it. We should get the same amount. So this is the same way of determining your cost of sales. That is all the amounts at the issue side, like the um, value you, you arrived at when you issued out a material to production. So we add all these to determine our cost of sales. So alternatively, we can also achieve our cost of sales by adding our opening stock, which is 10 CDs, and then our purchases. From our calculation, we had 100. We sum the two up and we get 110 CDs by lessing our closing stock, which is 11 CDs from it. Our cost of sales is 99 Ghana CDs. And to determine the gross profit, we less our cost of sales, which is the 99 CDs, from the 216 of sales, and we arrive at a gross profit of 117. And then we have Expenses of 50, of which we also have to less from the cost profit to arrive at our net profit. So this will bring us to the end of our profit statement preparation. Now you have a take home assignment. As we've been able to prepare the stock sheets using the six various methods, I'm sure before you go to the market, you'll be able to determine a price to go and purchase a material. Either you predetermine or you go by the actual price of materials on the market. So since we have used the first in, first out method to prepare our profit statement, I will leave the same question with you. You use it to prepare the stock sheet using the last in first out method and then you prepare the trading profit and loss account for the month of September using the LIFO method. So we have come to the end of our lesson today and I hope you have learned something that you'll be able to apply in your daily lives, how to purchase materials. You just don't go to the market to buy material, but you do what you predetermine some prices you are expecting to buy your materials on the market when you get there and it is higher or lower that is where you know whether you are going to get an extra money into your pocket before you go back to school you should put down some prices down you want to purchase your beverages and your sneakers to school so we've come to the end of material pricing and in our next lesson you'll be learning something interesting about labor accounting until we meet again i still remain your costing teacher madam judith have a blessed day subscribe to our youtube channel joy learning tv